Alright, hey, what's up? Um, 皆さん元気ですか私は元気です。I'm very, I'm very good.、Um, so, I'm going to talk today about transitioning from high seek method to actually reading Japanese sentences. Now, it's a question that was always on my mind when I started, and I didn't find much information on, on the internet,、uh, much less on YouTube. So, I hope this is going to help someone out there who is、uh, using high seek method. And basically, You can Google HiSeq method to see what it is because there are very, very detailed explanations online. But、um, a quick summary is that、um, the HiSeq method takes Japanese kanji, which are the Chinese characters, breaks them down into their primitive elements,、um, which you memorize over time. And you use these primitive elements to form highly imaginative stories, which help you to remember the kanji. And that's basically it. Now,、uh, you learn these kanji. In your base language. So for me, I learned the kanji in English. And some people don't really like this because they want to learn Japanese,、um, the meaning of the character at the same time、um, as they learn it, you know, when, when they write it. And High Six Method kind of puts forward the notion that if you are a native English speaker and you learn Japanese kanji in English, you're less likely to forget them. And then all you have to do is just practice、um, seeing the kanji over and over, you know, in reading or in writing. And eventually the meanings of the Japanese, the Japanese meanings will,、um, you know, you'll gain the understanding pretty easily. Well, not easily, but you'll gain them over time. Anyway, so how do we transition? Now, I'm gonna write a few sentences and、um, explain to you as I'm writing what is going on. All right, so. Right now, I'm gonna you know, write an example sentence and、um, you know, explain some of the basics of the transitioning process. So, first, I'll write the sentence. Right. So this sentence says,、uh, Watashi wa Nihongo ga daisuki desu. It means I love Japanese. So I'm going to isolate the kanji and、um, show you how it's broken up in Haisik. So this kanji is I. Okay? I or me is Watashi. Wa is a basic hiragana, which is、um, some of the basic Japanese. Characters that you learn, which are much easier to learn than the Chinese characters. Now, this is Nihon, and any student of Japanese should recognize these two kanji pretty easily. It means day and book, but this literally means Japan. So, anytime you see a Japanese study book or anything relating to Japan, you will see Nihon involved with it. So, let me write these down day and book. This is Go. Nihongo, and this is word. So, Japanese word. Now, ga is actually a, another hiragana, so we can skip that. Daisuki desu. Now, this is big, and this is fond of. So, looking at the sentence, you'll see I, wa, de, book, word, ga, big, fond of, ki desu. That's not how you literally read it, but that's how your mind is going to process it if you don't know the kanji right away. So, this is very, very common. It's watashi. So, then now I'll just put down at the bottom here watashi wa. Then, de is ni in this case. Book is hon. Ni hon. Then, go. Ni hon go ga. Big is. Dai and Suki is fond of. Suki. So, this is how the process starts. You're going to start seeing sentences and you're going to see kanji that you've learned、um, while you know, doing the high sig method. And then you're going to look up the meanings and so on and start translating them.、Uh, you know, because, for example, this one, which Suki. This is actually this is a kanji for woman, and this is a kanji for child. 
So it's woman is fond of her child. That's like a very good way to remember um, this kanji right here. And I know um, Dai as a big Saint Bernard. It's like a big, a really, really big dog. So whenever I see this, I see a big Saint Bernard. And when I see this, I see a woman that likes her child. So this is how you start uh, the transitioning process. And um, I'm going to go into my next sentence to give you another example, a real simple example of how this is done. All right, so for the second sentence, I'm just going to write it just like at the last one. All right, so this sentence says, Akai bara o kaimashita which means I bought a red rose alright very simple sentence so breaking it up one more time this is red in using high sig that's red now bara is actually Japanese katakana and katakana are Japanese words that um, are used to say English you know foreign English words such as let's see so like teburu is table um, toraku is truck, chocoretto is uh, chocolate. Okay, so this is bara, which is rose. Don't ask me why it's bara, but it just is. I didn't really research it. All right, so um, so we're going on. So this is the next kanji right here, and it means buy. All right. So again, in your mind, you're going to see red i bara o buy imashita. Now that's not how you're going to say it to yourself, but that's just how your mind's going to process it. So. Writing the meanings on here. Red is akai, okay, and bai is ka, from kao. All right. So akai bara o kai mashita. So this is like how you're gonna start the um, transitioning process. And when you're, you know, like uh, doing things with different groups of kanji and you begin to write them, you're going to make uh, very interesting word associations. Um, for, for example, um, let's see, G is time, okay? So this is time. Um, so this is G. Now, Jikan is hour. So Jikan is G. And what this means literally is time interval. G. Come. Right? So this is like the basics of when kanji start getting grouped together. As you saw before with Daisuki, these are, sorry, these are two characters, two kanji, one, two, that form together to make one word. And as you start learning more kanji, um, you know, when you're reading sentences and so on, you're going to start grouping them together. Um, so in my, in my video on breaking down complex kanji, which is going to be part two of this one, um, you're going to see how I tackle that and also how I get multiple meanings for the kanji, which I'm going to explain in the next video post. But this is just to give you two examples of sentences that... Um, you can start analyzing using the high sig method in a very basic way. All right, so I uh, realized that there's one thing I didn't uh, add, and I'm going to say it now. Um, this was the most important question for me when I just started learning um, high sig method. I was like, okay, so I understand that I can read kanji with the English meanings and sentences, like recognize them, but how do I find the meanings? Now. How you find the meanings is you'll need a reference system. And um, I'm going to mention this in my hyper-reference video, but I generally use uh, an iPod Touch with um, Kotoba ap uh, Application Dictionary. And all I do is I look up the word in English and I will always find the meaning in Japanese. That's one way. So if I want to find out day, I just type in day and um, it will bring up hi or nichi or whatever the meaning is. If I see suki, which is fond of, 
I could type in fond of, I could type fond, I could type like, and I can break down the sentence. But what I found is one of the best methods to do this is actually to listen to a lot of sentences and then write them. And um, I'm going to talk about this when I talk about using Anki because in Anki you can learn hundreds of sentences or thousands of sentences. Um, you can do listening exercises, you can do reading exercises. And I find that the, the listening exercises are really good because what they do is you hear somebody say something like, um, like I'll use the same example, um, Akai bara o kaimashita. So you hear Akai bara o kaimashita, then I would try and write that Akai bara o kaimashita. And then I double check the answer when it pops up. So I'd hear the meaning and I'd write it based on what I know in English in my mind. Okay, and also, you know, when you're using Anki, you'll be exposed to hundreds of different sentences and you'll start recognizing the kanji. And Anki will test you um, if you memorize the meaning. So if you see the English meaning and then you see the Japanese meaning of times, so what's going to happen is after a while it's going to convert in your head. So you need a reference system, number one, and you also need massive exposure to sentences to start transitioning. I hope this video was very helpful and if you have any questions, please feel free to. Uh, you know, go on my blog and contact me or shoot me an email at marcustube at gmail.com. Gambate.